Welcome to Chess, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate you guys very much for stopping by. So uh, I'm just uh, kind of continuing uh, the uh, the first. I, I was making like a series on Wesley So uh, and him uh, playing like pretty much his first games against like major people. Um, and so uh, this is his first game against uh, Gada Komsky. Uh, and uh, this is from the 2009 World Cup. I already did a video from the 2009 World Cup, I believe. Um, it was uh, Vasily Ivanchuk uh, that he played uh, as well. Uh, so um, this is taken from round three. Uh, and uh, this is 2009. So this was a year after Wesley So became a grandmaster. Uh, so he's still kind of young. Um, so, you know, he's, he's not playing like in the tip top yet. Uh, and as you guys can see, um, he is still representing uh, the Philippines. Um, so as always, my people in the Philippines, um, I will say Mabuhay. Uh, Kamustana uh, king my kai began. Masaya koma kitty king muli. Maliga yang pak dating sam my chest, ladies and gentlemen. Hello ulit. Appreciate you guys very much. I do have another uh, phrase that I learned, um, and it is uh, maging dakila. So let me know if I said that right. Uh, let me see. Maging dakila. Bam. And uh, in uh, at some at some point, uh, Gadakomsky did represent the Soviet Union before. Uh, the Soviet Union did uh, collapse. Um, so um, I will speak Russian. Uh, so I will say, Dobre uh, otra. Kakdela, spasibo for coming by and taking a look at my stuff if you do speak Russian. I appreciate everybody very much. Uh, but let's go ahead and get rolling. All right, so we got, let me see. Uh, ooh, I did do that. Let me, let me change the settings. I did turn the sound off. So that's the reason I turned, uh, I didn't turn the sound off. Okay, bam. So we got, okay, got the sounds rolling. So we do have E4, uh, we have E6, so we do have the French defense. We got D4, D5, and I mean, this is probably gonna be about 95% of the time that you play E4 and you play against the French, it's gonna go in this fashion. Uh, and then you can kind of start branching off from here. So we do see Knight to C3. A lot of players are really annoyed at the winnower. Uh, and so they elect to go Knight to D2. Uh, and then you have the ability to play C3 to block. Uh, I was kind of one of those players, um, even though Knight to C3 is going to be slightly better. Uh, actually, no, it's not. Okay, so Knight to D2 is better. Anyways, uh, so that is a Tarash variation. But uh, we do see Knight to C3. We got Knight to F6. And almost always, uh, I mean, not almost always. I mean, you can definitely go like the exchange as well. Uh, but in the game, um, and a lot of times you do see E5. Just kind of inconveniencing the knight. But even though it kind of looks like you're putting it on a weird square back here to D7, it looks like you're kind of jumbling your pieces. You do end up having a really, really nice game as black. You know, you're going to play C5. You're going to put a lot of pressure uh, onto uh, this D4 point uh, because it does become um, a little bit harder to defend uh, when you do not have the C3 pawn or the C pawn push to C3. So we do have f4, we got c5, knight comes to f3, this is all very standard stuff. Knight comes to c6, we see bishop to e3, and then we do see queen to b6. Uh, and queen to b6, like I said before, is just adding a lot of pressure onto d4, uh, but it is also throwing a little sneak attack uh, over here on b2. Now, what we see in the game is a3. a3 is like super logical, um, and black has to be very careful here. Uh, because if they do go pawn grabbing with queen takes b2, uh, you are going to be looking at knight to a4, uh, and now your queen is just gone. Uh, you're going to have to try to probably take the rook in the corner. I mean, that's going to be the best you could do. You know, at least get some type of material going. But uh, after a3, uh, black is, you know, definitely hip to that. So he goes pawn takes d4. We see knight takes d4, a bishop. Um, up to uh, c5 uh, and then we do see knight to a4 something kind of had to give because this bishop is actually currently undefended uh, and uh, you know we have a lot of pressure on this point point. Um, and this is exactly what black is trying to do uh, so knight to a4 it does inconvenience uh, the queen uh, and so the queen comes to a5 we check and then now we're able to push c3 uh, and we do have everything pretty much uh, taken care of uh, so we do see bishop takes d4, bishop takes d4, knight takes d4, queen takes d4. Uh, and as you guys can see, we are protecting this knight, which without the queen is undefended. Um, so we got b6. We're preparing to, uh, you know, get our bishop out. So the bishop comes to e2, bishop comes to a6. And I mean, you know, of course you have some options. You can, you know, capture here. 
the queen would capture it, but that's a little bit inconvenient in your king uh, because you do kind of want to get it castled. Uh, so we actually see bishop uh, down to d1. And this is protecting the knight, so it is allowing the queen uh, the ability to, to you know move around a little bit. Uh, so the queen does come to b5 because why not threaten some nasties over here? At the moment, we do have everything taken care of. Like, you know, we're, we're covering all of these squares and stuff like that, so we don't really have a checkmate set up. Uh, but you definitely are not castling. Uh, and this is definitely one of the, the, the things that you want to try to do when you're playing the French um, as black because a lot of the times your king does get stuck in the center of the board. Uh, so if you can try to go bishop to a6 uh, and uh, mess up white's castling, do so. Um, it For those of you that are familiar with like how castling goes, uh, the king cannot pass through a, a, an attack square. Uh, so the problem is we'd have this bishop attacking this entire diagonal so to castle the king would have to pass through this square to get to g1 and castle and that's illegal so uh like i said because you have the setup like this white cannot castle at the moment that's okay and that's not what he did okay uh after we see queen to b5 we actually see b4 uh the rook uh comes to c8 uh we see knight down to b2 and this is a point where you got to kind of be a little bit careful because if you don't do something let's say you just do it like a castles right um, and you allow a four to come, the queen is pretty much going to have to go to c6 and then you're going to see b5 and you're going to be looking at a fork of your queen and your bishop. And also you, white is going to be allowed to castle. So you definitely don't want to get into that. So, uh, Wesley Soap does go queen to c6 and now, I mean, you know, that attack is going to be too slow. So the rook comes to c1. We were uh, double attacking this pawn here. Uh, so we're just getting it defended. We got castles by black. We see a four. Because, you know, why not try to sneak that attack in? But we do see bishop down to c4, uh, and we're not worried about trading here. The queen is going to take, and then the rook is going to take, and you're going to be, you know, putting a lot of pressure on this backward uh, c3 pawn. Uh, so the bishop does come to g4. We got bishop down to b3. We see castles by white finally getting castled. And we have bishop taking a4. Uh, and then we do have the attack um, on f5 uh, for white. Uh, and um, it is desirable uh, to either trade here or to even push the pawn up uh, because, you know, if you do encourage some type of dark square weaknesses uh, on black, uh, you are going to be, you know, if you're able to get like F6 in and you're forcing G6, I mean, you're pretty much going to be able to drop down to E3. And I mean, you're going to try to have to do something about this because, you know, that is going to be threatening checkmate. So, uh, but we have actually reached a point in the game that as black, if you do want to pause the video and see what is the best move in a position and the one Wesley So comes up with, go ahead and do so. Okay, cool. So, um, so in this position that you have here, you have white thrusting F5 at you, right? So a majority of the time when you're playing a game, you know, you are thinking, okay, I'm being attacked. How can I defend this attack, right? You know, how can I try to get out of it? Or, you know, if you have like, let's say a piece is getting attacked or something like that. Usually you're thinking like, how can I like best defend the piece or something like that, right? But what a lot of you guys I think might know is one of the best defenses to getting attacked is actually counterattacking. And that's what Wesley So does here. So we actually see Bishop to B5 in the position. And this is like a super great move. Um, he is placing an attack uh, on this Rook and he's threatening to win the exchange. So you're trying to inconvenience like the placement uh, of white's pieces. Uh, if you have a bishop, why not, right? So if you did get, guess bishop to b5, then you are calm under pressure and you did find a really nice uh, Zweishenzug move. Uh, and so we see uh, white going rook f to e1. We see rook f to e8. Uh, we see rook up to e3. We see f6. And like black is also trying to slow down what white has going on. As you can see now, it's not as bad of a situation because, I mean, you're not super worried about, uh, you know, your dark squares. Uh, and of course, if you take here, the knight is going to take back. And I mean, that's just going to be, you know, a really nice situation. You can also throw in and, uh, you know, the little in-between move here. It's all possible. Uh, so we do see pawn taking e6, the knight taking e5. Uh, and this is a really nice square uh, because white does not have a dark squared bishop. Uh, this knight really can just kind of live here forever. Uh, and you don't really have the, I mean, you kind of do have the ability to go knight to d3 here. But, I mean, yeah, you're still, you're, you're good as black. 
So we have bishop up to f5, uh, and then we do see uh, g6. The bishop comes down to h3. And as you guys can see too, even though you kind of have a little bit of uh, some dark square holes uh, here, you don't really have a good piece to exploit it. I mean, because you don't have a dark square bishop yourself, and this knight is really far away from this side of the board. So, you know, black is actually fairly safe in this position, actually doing a little bit better. Uh, so the queen does come to d6. We see rook over to d1 because, of course, uh, you know, we were threatening some uh, some possibilities over here with this pawn, you know, because this rook is undefended. Bam. So we do see rook over to d1. Rook c comes to d8. Uh, we're just trying to make sure that we protect everything that we have in the position. Uh, so we're protecting this d pawn uh, and stuff like that. So we do see rook up to d2. We see queen to e7 and we see rook over to f2. And something I want you guys to be paying attention to, even though this is not a situation where, uh, you know, you have a whole lot of moves as white, right? What Something I want you to notice is what white is kind of doing with their rooks. Is if you notice, they're putting, they're making sure that they're on dark squares. Uh, so you see, you know, we have a dark squares and then when you move it again, it's on a dark square. You know, what you have to be paying attention to is that white has uh, this uh, light squared bishop. And so the best possible scenario for your heavy pieces are going to be on dark squares. You just always want to kind of get in that habit of doing that. So kidding that off the board. Uh, we do see knight up to c6. We see queen down to d2. And as you can see, the retreat move is back to a dark square. Uh, so we do see d4. Rook comes up to e4. Pawn takes c3. And you really have to take with the queen uh, because you can't just leave it on d2 uh, because that's not good. Uh, the rook was, you know, attacking there. So rook comes to f8. Uh, we see g4. You don't really want uh, the pawns to get pushed, uh, knocking your rook away. Um, so we do see rook over to d6. The bishop comes back to g2. We see knight down to e5. We got g5. Why not try to undermine um, this knight and go ahead and just, oops, grab it for free. So the rook takes on e6. Pawn takes, G, pawn takes f6, rook takes f6. Uh, we got rook takes f6, queen takes f6. Uh, and, uh, you know, we do have uh, some nasties uh, possibly coming up um, with this bishop redirecting over here like this. Uh, and then you have to think about that your queen is undefended on c3. So we want to try to do something about that. Uh, so the rook does come down to e3, and now we are defending uh, the queen. Uh, so the bishop comes to c6, knight comes down to d1. The queen comes over to g5 because why not? Less threaten mates. Always threaten mate if you can, if you can get away with doing so. Uh, so we do see uh, rook to g3 uh, blocking that mate. The queen comes to f4. The knight comes up to f2. Bishop takes g2. King takes g2. Uh, we see knight to c4. We see queen to d3. Rook a com or knight comes to e3 with check. The king comes down to g1. We see knight up to f5. The queen comes up to d5. We see uh, queen down to c1. Knight down to d1. We see king to f7. Uh, we see rook to c3. Queen comes back to g5. The king comes up to f2. Queen comes to f4. And let me see. Let me just check something right quick. Okay. <laughs> uh, we do have king over to g2. Queen, uh, queen goes to g4 with check. The king comes to f2. The queen comes down to e2 with check. Of course, we cannot move this rook because it is pinned to the king at the moment. But technically, you still have the support of the rook um, You know, to throw a check with the queen. The king comes down to g1. We see queen to e1 with check. The king comes up to g2. Uh, and then the king sidesteps over to g7. And it is in this position uh, that black resigns the game. I know what you're thinking. Okay. So, I mean, you are down two entire pawns as white, which looks kind of dire. But, I mean, looking at the situation, it might kind of seem like, man, it doesn't seem like black is just completely winning, right? Well, unfortunately, you are in a really, really crazy dire position. The position is so bad that uh, the computer actually wants you to sacrifice the queen on e6 for the rook. Um, and just to show you one possibility of what could occur, um, this king is just insanely open. And now black has just sidestepped uh, over uh, and you are not threatening, uh, you know, any uh, pins and stuff like that. So rook to e2 is coming. Uh, so thinking about that, one possible line of play 
uh, not queen taking e6. Could be uh, possibly queen to d7 with check. Rook blocking on e7. Queen down to d3. Rook down to e2. Because like I said, there was really no way to prevent Rook coming to e2. Uh, and uh, this knight was going to be a little bit loose as well. Uh, so king up to f3. Queen to f1 with check. King to g4. Knight coming up to h6 with check. And it is crucial that this king is here protecting this knight. Uh, and so uh, queen, uh, king stepping over to h4. Queen to f4 with check. King comes to h3. Uh, and then we see rook to h2 with checkmate. And that is just one of the possibilities. Um, I mean, as you guys can see, this king is just way too open uh, for the position. This king is actually a little bit safer behind this little pawn wall here. So that was just a possibility of what could happen. So, um, but like I said before, once you sidestep, uh, once you sidestep this king, you don't have this pin anymore, and now this rook is free to move. And so now you're just like basically going to be putting this king in a box at some point. So. It's just, it's just some nasties. Plus, you can't really move this rook away um, because you are, uh, man, you are looking at knight, uh, you know, down here. You can, like, sacrifice the queen here, something like this, uh, and then deflect the queen away and then do something like that if the rook moves. So that is uh, pretty, pretty nasty. So um, I appreciate you guys very much for coming by. Uh, sorry I've been MIA for, like, a long time. Um, I've been, like, super duper busy. So hopefully I will get some free time coming up. But I appreciate you guys stopping by very much, and I'll see y'all next time.